Hi everyone and welcome back to the Marketplace Night. During this short video I want to take you through one of the Arbor artworks that's came from Piccadilly Support Services in Lancaster and it's a stunning installation. So you met Piccadilly Support Services in one of the earlier videos and this is another artwork that they've created as part, uh, part of their autism groups there. So what I, I learned a lot and I said this in the earlier video with Piccadilly, I learned a great deal from them. One of the things that I learned from them, especially from Helen Flower at Piccadilly, was that an autistic brain works 40 times faster than an MT's or neurotypical's brain. And I found that fact absolutely fascinating because I don't know about you, but sometimes my brain, when it seems like it's just overworking and it's going into overload, I can't imagine it working 10 times, never mind 40 times faster. So I thought that was a really, really insightful um, sort of fact just to understand how an autistic person's brain is potentially working, how fast it's working. Whilst I was working with the people at Piccadilly, um, they kept talking about this idea of stimming, and I thought, what is stimming? And they taught me that stimming is basically self-regulatory behaviours and repetitive movements that allows them to be able to regulate their brain. So it's often misinterpreted that it stimulates, but it doesn't it actually does the reverse. It calms, it relaxes, and it allows that really fast working brain, 40 times faster working brain, to just sort of regulate and, and relax a little bit. And so what um, I'm going to show you today is an installation that's been created around stimming and stimming behaviours of members from Piccadilly. So let's go and check it out. It's up here in the corner and it does tend to grab, capture a lot of attention because many people don't really know what it is. Unlike the poetry or the paintings or the sculptures, it's just series of things all sort of brought together, but it tells a really, really important story in the world of people with autism. So what was really interesting when I was working with um, the groups in Piccadilly was that they kept saying, oh, well, you know, we've not really got marketplace stories that we can tell you. We don't really, we're not very creative, blah, blah, blah. But then they started talking about their stimming behaviours and I realised that actually there was lots of marketplace exchanges there. They were talking about things like music, gaming, baking, um, pets. Pets and, pets and consumption is huge. Pets consumption is huge. And I thought, okay, that's really interesting. There's all marketplace things happening there. But then they said they weren't creative and that's why the idea came because many of them were like the baking um, poise we're going to see, music, they're all very, very creative things. They're things that no way could I do many of the things that, that, that are shown in this installation. And I thought, well, they are actually really creative. So that's where this idea was born. And I suggested to them that they band together to create an installation that, that really tells their stimming stories. So let's go a little bit closer and we'll learn about them in more detail. So starting off at the top here, we have baking from Helen. And for Helen, she finds that baking is stimming for her because it, it has a sense of precision. It's a sense of, of knowing what will happen at the end. If she puts in the right ingredients, she puts in the right measurements, she put, bakes it for the right time, she'll get this beautiful product at the end of it. And she finds that really, really sort of stimming and regulatory for her. Then if we move down here, we have Kenny and his poi. I'll just go a little bit closer so that you can see so as you can see, it's a really beautiful sort of dance-like, acrobatic-like movement. And for Kenny, he says that this just helps him to regulate his brain and to there be able to interact in, in social settings. So for him, he says he has these in his pocket at all times. And he just takes his poi out whenever he's starting to feel a bit nervous, especially if he's in like crowded spaces. So he may be in the centre of the marketplace and he'll just find some space, take his poi out, and do a little bit of poi for a few moments and it just helps to regulate his brain and then allow him to be able to, to move on and socialise and interact in that busy environment. And then when we move a little bit further down here, we have gaming. As you can see, we've got a games console. And this is another stimming behaviour from Helen. When she's not baking, she says that she likes to game. And she finds the repetitiveness of the console, the buttons, pressing them back and forth, she finds that really, really stimming-like and regulatory. She talks a lot about how she will go into binges of gaming, but she'll just game all day or for days on end. And then if we move a little bit further along, lots of people are always asking, why is there a cello? And the cello is representative of Amy's stimming narrative. 
for Amy, she finds that she, she plays the cello absolutely beautifully. She's the most beautiful purple cello. But for her, she finds that it really helps her to express her sense of self and her verbal voice in a way that she feels unable to do verbally. And so I want to just tell you and let you hear a little bit of Amy's cello playing and her story. And we're doing that through these talking tiles. So I want you to find a way of integrating talking tiles into this exhibit um, because these are really cool tools that are used by autistic people but also by those with sensory impairments. And I thought it would be really nice if we could integrate them somehow and this installation was a perfect way to, to do that. So here is Amy's cello story. a bit short there because I know that we've got other stories to tell but I hope that just helps to understand Amy's cello story and the importance of the cello to her. Now if we look up we can see that everything is sort of situated on a cat's play area which might seem a little bit strange but that sort of helps to communicate Janina's cat story and her pet story and how for Janina just petting her cat over and over that repetitive movement it helps her to, to stim, it helps her to regulate her brain. She says it drives her cat crazy, he's always trying to get away from her, but that for her it just sort of really helps to stim, to, to stim and to regulate her brain. And her second stimming behaviour is that Janina is a wonderful musician. She plays the piano and she sings beautifully. And here's a little rendition of a song that she um, sung for us for this installation. gives you a little bit of insight and a little bit of um, a sound bite of Janina's singing which is just beautiful um, but I just found it really surprising that, that all the, the, the sort of members that have brought together this installation didn't see themselves as creative because as you can see there's a lot of creativity in this installation um, but there's also a lot of commercial and marketplace sort of interlaces there as well. So that sort of concludes our stimming installation or this little tour of our stimming installation. I hope you found it insightful. I hope that for many of you who, like myself, didn't know anything about stimming, it's maybe just helped you to understand that behaviour a little bit better. Um, thank you so much, as always, for your time, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next instalment of The Marketplace Now. Until then, take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye.